هكذا قال الرب صوت سمع في الراما نوح وبكاء مر رحيل تبكي على أولادها وتأبى أن تتعزى على عن أولادهم لأنهم ليسوا بموجودين A voice is heard in Ramah lamentation and bitter weeping First I'd like to thank my ELCA siblings who are black indigenous and people of color It was glorious and brought me alive last night at the multicultural dinner to be with you all. I felt like I could let down my guard and be with your beauty and vitality. I'm an artist of the written word, not so much a public speaker or preacher, so I hope you'll bear with me. This is addressed to my BIPOC siblings in the ELCA. A voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Do you recognize yourself in these laments? Sharing experience and experience of the racism you've faced, only to have your white pastor or congregation friends doubt or dismiss your experience? That is, they don't believe you. They don't truly believe you. You feel weary that this happens again and again. You may think, if they don't believe my stories, how can I believe they love me? Or working for a future church in which the idolatry of whiteness is banished forever in favor of living out the love made visible in Jesus, and yet your work is ignored, undervalued, or looked at suspiciously. Or this lament, needing to go slow and help the majority folks feel comfortable, which feels demeaning and demoralizing. I lament that to put out hope feels vulnerable and tender. What has to die in order for you to live and truly flourish? Have you ever wondered in your weariness whether it's your connection to this denomination? You've considered it before, perhaps. There's an idea of kenosis that is a self-emptying or self-sacrifice. Um, theologian M. Sean Copeland talks about kenosis in a different way. For black and brown bodies, it's about emptying oneself of the white supremacy, the, the racism, and rejecting those things. Copeland goes on to say that solidarity is what we need. Solidarity sets the dynamics of love against the dynamics of domination. Weariness, desperation, exhaustion, wanting to be heard, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Have you heard something like, why is it important that I pronounce your name correctly? Why did what I just said hurt you? I don't understand. Where are you really from? Whether it's your church, a life partner, a friend, I know, and maybe you, my BIPOC siblings, know the exhaustion, the desperation of trying to be heard, trying to let the person or institution that I love know what change needs to happen in order for me to be able to flourish. We ask for this change because we love them and we want to stay connected. When those cries go unheard or when only half-hearted efforts are made to address the pain, the wound is deepened. What relief I have experienced when I've talked to pastors who acknowledge the sin of racism and took it seriously. They were like a life-saving drink of water in a dry desert. But there should be abundant flowing cascades of water refreshing all of us 
Abundance is a promise of God. So why do we stay? Like any difficult human relationship, we stay here in the ELCA because we love and we see a potential for change and hope. And when we hear something to the effect of, if you give me credit for the little bit of work that I have done, we long to hear instead life-giving words of commitment, like, what can I do to fully honor your needs? I know it's going to be a lot of work, it's going to be a lifetime commitment, but I'm here for it. I'm committed to doing the work. I lament that I also know the pain of hearing my BIPOC siblings give up on the ELCA, people who have worked for years, even decades, trying to love this church into loving everybody. Weeping for her children, for they're, they are no more. They've decided why work so hard to prove myself worthwhile. If I'm not loved and welcomed fully, then my place is not with them. I've teetered on the edge of this question myself. As people of faith, we do not make our home in lament. We stay in lament for a season. We look around and assess. We take time, take responsibility, and to grieve. And then we look for hope. Adrienne Marie Brown says, if we wake up, if we are aware, we are in a place where we can create so much history and so much change Everything is falling apart, but also new things are possible. Black, indigenous, people of color siblings, we do embody the word. May our beloved ELCA siblings fully see us as our creator sees us. <laughs>